Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying the 2019 National Book Festival. What a morning we're having already. My name is Anya Kreitney. I'm the Programs Manager at the Poetry and Literature Center, housed all the way at the Library of Congress. And it's my pleasure to introduce author and illustrator Lucy Ruth Cummins. Yay, Lucy! Wait, hold on, let's start one second. Let's start. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Lucy will be reading and sharing with us today, and we couldn't be more thrilled to meet her in person. As a mother of an 18-month-old, I feel newly indebted to children's books, how they gesture, signal, rhyme, how they challenge and explain, and especially how the inventive ones wink at us, the parents who read the same book over and over and over again. Lucy's books are like that, full of fun and interrupted expectation. My favorite is the hungry lion or a dwindling assortment of animals. Maybe you know it, yeah, you know it. I love its listing and wordplay. I love announcing all those friendly animals so my son and I can find them together. Mostly I love how that sneaky lion gets his own comeuppance and a tiny turtle, the unrecognized king of Lucy's books, triumph over all. Reading Lucy's books, I can tell she not only loves kids, but admires their curiosity, their bravery, and their vibrancy, just like you. Before we hear from her, let me give the parents a little logistical information. Lucy will be signing books from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in line 22, right over there on the expo floor. And her full title list includes A Hungry Lion or a Dwindling Assortment of Animals, Stumpkin, and her newest illustrated books are Truman and The Love Letter. I know Lucy would be happy to see you in her signing line. So without further ado, let's bring on Lucy Ruth Cummins. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Oh, look at got this cool thing and I'm going to tell you a little bit about me as a person and then I'm going to read you two books and I hope you'll like them. And I also have a laser pointer on this so we'll see if I can use that too. Oh, yep, it works. Okay. Good morning. My name is Lucy Ruth Cummins. Uh, I'm going to advance my slide like this. As you can see, I'm an author and an illustrator which means I write books and I illustrate books. I draw the pictures for them. So they asked me to tell you a little bit about who I am as a person. So here's that section. Uh, I was born in Montreal, Canada. That's me as a baby. My mom said I looked like a bowling ball with a little bit of hair. Um, and then when I was a little girl, we moved to Cortland, New York, which is in the middle of New York State. And as you can see, I have a very Washington, D.C. appropriate picture. Does anybody see what's behind me? It's the Declaration of Independence. They had better backgrounds when I was a kid. Uh, so when I was 17 years old, I moved to Brooklyn, New York to go to art school at the Pratt Institute. And look what a happy kid I was. And I studied to be an artist, and I got a beret. And then later I went on to work in book publishing. And in book publishing, I'm an art director, and I make other people's picture books. So I help them figure out the best possible picture for the story they're trying to tell, and I design all the text within a picture book, and I help them tell their stories. And as I did that for 10 years, I kept thinking, I really like to draw pictures for children too. I'd like to illustrate some books and tell some stories myself. So now, during the day, I make other people's books, and during the night, I make my own books. Really late into the night, all the time, and I'm always tired. So, uh, you can see here, here's me with my four-year-old son. Is anybody four? When did you turn four? Last year? So then you're almost five. July, tw my birthday's July 28th. They're very close. You're July 27th? <laughs> there you go, another Leo. And as you can see, and uh, I just read Truman, which I'm gonna read to you guys next to my son in his preschool class. When I told him I was gonna read to his class, he asked if instead I'd want to read something he would write, because he's not a big fan of my work. 
And his poem was a way bigger hit than my book was. Uh, so these are the books I've done so far, um, and some new ones coming out in the spring. But without uh, further ado, I'll read to you guys Truman. Truman, I drew the pictures, and Jean Reedy is the author who wrote the beautiful words for this story. And I'm going to put on my glasses so I can read them to you. Does anybody know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Or if there is a difference, does anybody think they're the same? My friend? He's what we call a plant. <laughs> That's exactly right. When I started to write or draw the pictures for this story, I thought turtles and tortoises were the same thing. So when I started to make a habitat, a tank for the, the Truman in my story, I thought it should have water in it. Does that make sense? Not for a tortoise, right? OK. So let me tell you a story about Truman. That's OK. Yeah. All right. Truman. There's Truman. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars and the number 11 bus, which traveled south. Does anybody spot Truman in this picture? He's really tiny. Let me see if I can figure out how to use this here. Let's see. He's really tiny, and he's up here in this window here. You'll recognize these curtains later. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked or anything, at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. Does anybody know what pensive means? Pensive means he's very thoughtful, right? That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? I knew it. One day, Sarah had a, ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow into her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero tortoises did. There's actually 32 tortoises. I numbered all of them. Can anybody count to 32? Just a show of hands. I knew it. I had a feeling. Uh, Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish, two more than usual. And she kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, be brave. Then she left. Now, don't say it, but does anybody have an idea about where she might be going with that backpack on her back? And zip your lip if you think you know. OK. But does Truman know? Truman doesn't know yet what's going on. He just knows he's being left, and he's got extra beans. Not to worry, she'd left before, and she'd always returned. But that, this time, that backpack was particularly big, and Sarah looked particularly pensive. And that banana and that bow, and let's not forget about those extra beans. How many extra beans? Two. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. Look, there she is with her mom getting on that bus. And there he is seeing her. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited a thousand tortoise hours. Hours. <laughs> tortoise hours, that is. Until he could wait no longer. He, could go, he would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 south, even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. Even if it seemed... Impossible. What happened? He bonked right up against the edge, right? Do you think he's going to be able to get on that bus? No? That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks, that had always been there. Ordinary rocks that now seemed extraordinary. And the arm of the couch. Look, there he is. And the pillow propped up just right. And that tall boot, that's based on boots I actually own. And that rug, that glorious. 
endless rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Does anybody know what vast means? What do you think? It looks endless. He's exactly right. He doesn't know if he's ever going to make it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's true. Without Sarah there, he doesn't even feel like he could do it, right? Truly unsettling. Look how scary these things look to him. And look at, even that safety pin is open. That's unsafe. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis and the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. You know what I did when I had to draw this picture to figure out how to make that possible? I laid right down on the ground and I looked right up. And I found out what it would be like to be a little tiny tortoise in a big room. Which way was south anyway? Look how worried he is. Now, the sun hung low like Truman's head and his heart. But just then, look, the dandelion from her hair. And then vroom, screech, whish. Up floors and under doors, Truman heard it. A bus. It was time, time to catch the number 11 south amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. Yet standing there in the ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive and brave. Does he look very brave? But just as he was about to slip under the door, through the opening barely the size of a small tortoise, <gasps> who's there? Anybody recognize that shoe? Sarah, she uh, spotted him, shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to the shell and tucked him back safely into the tank. And he was peaceful and pensive and proud. Can you guys make a really proud face? And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. What story did she write at school? She wrote a book about Truman. She was thinking about him all day long. Now Truman knew that one day soon, he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts. Look, he's meeting all our friends at school. Together. Look, they're riding the bus together. This is a nod to the graduate. So that is Truman, written by my friend Jean Reedy and pictures that I drew. I hope you liked it. Would anybody like one more story? One more? You gotta clap really loud if you want one more story. Okay. You're lucky the slides are already in the slide presentation. Okay. So, yeah, that's the reaction I want. <laughs> Stumpkin. Now, it, who has read Stumpkin? I see that there are some people who might know this one. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, tell you a little bit about why I wrote Stumpkin and then I'm gonna read you the story. I was with my two year, my son was two years old and we were at a pumpkin patch and he walked up to a pumpkin that looked like this pumpkin. Who can tell me what's wrong with this pumpkin? What's missing? Stem. So my son who was two years old ran up and grabbed a pumpkin with no stem and a little girl ran up and said, you don't want that pumpkin. It hasn't got a stem. And I thought, the poor thing. It's never going to be a jack-o'-lantern. So I decided to tell his story. So this is Stumpkin. So here's a truck with pumpkins, and it's going to the big city. It was a few days before Halloween outside a little shop in a big city. A shopkeeper placed some pumpkins on the shelves. A girl came and looked at the pumpkins. When uh, she was done, she picked one up and carried it away. The other pumpkins worried after their friend. They don't know what's going to happen. Even the cat looks worried. 
But then they spotted him across the street and way up high. Looks pretty happy, right? He was a jack-o'-lantern, and beneath his lovely stem, he now had two triangle eyes, a nose, a giant toothy smile, and he had a new home, a perch all to himself high above the street where, where <laughs> my eyes don't work, where <laughs> what more could anyone want, thought the other pumpkins. They were thrilled for their friend and thrilled that they too might someday be jack-o'-lanterns. Quick question. Does everybody know what they're going to be for Halloween? Just raise your hand if you already know. Okay, you've got a little bit of time left if you don't know yet. They went, all went happily uh, lost into thought, imagining themselves as jack-o'-lanterns when one pumpkin realized something was very wrong. Uh-oh. Poor little pumpkin. Poor little stemless pumpkin with just a stump, not a stem. Poor little Stumpkin. Still, there was plenty to like about Stumpkin. He was a handsome pumpkin, as orange as a traffic cone. He was as big as a basketball and twice as round. Stem schmem, who knows? Some people might even prefer a stemless pumpkin. Who would like a stemless pumpkin? You would? A few people? Who likes a stem on their pumpkin? Yeah, a little bit of a stem thing. You want both? You're a good consumer. That would be good. Uh, days passed and more people came and some pumpkins left and some pumpkins stayed. It wasn't yet Halloween and there were still plenty of windows that needed jack-o'-lanterns. Who would be lucky enough to take home Stumpkin? As orange as an orange, as big as a basketball, round. He was very nearly the perfect pumpkin, very nearly, truly. Do, does he seem like he feels perfect? The next day, more people came, and the shopkeeper's cat settled on Stumpkin's smooth top. Then it happened. A brilliant baby chose Stumpkin until a bad dog ruined it, and the baby changed his mind. Look, now the baby wants the little tiny pumpkin now that he knows there's no stem. Oh well, thought Stumpkin. It was the day of Halloween and there were still a few empty windows. Two were left on the shopkeeper's shelf. A boy came and when the boy left, who do you think he picked? Stumpkin remained. The gourd? Thought Stumpkin. I guess that's that. It was Halloween night and the shop was closed. There were no more days left. The shopkeeper scooped up poor Stumpkin and carried him off. Stumpkin wouldn't be getting a window and he wouldn't be getting a new home. He already had a home. And that made Stumpkin very happy. So the shopkeeper ended up finding a good home for him, right? And that is that. And now I have five minutes for questions about pumpkins or Halloween or tortoises and turtles or anything else. Does anybody want to be a writer or an illustrator when they grow up? I had a feeling there'd be a lot of you. Yeah? <laughs> you have a question? Okay. <laughs> I think I answered all the questions with my art. Oh, I do have a question. I really loved your story. I'm a teacher. I teach second yeah. grade, so that's really cute. Uh, which do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to write? or illustrate, or do you just really love the combination of the two? Uh, I love doing both. I love when I have, can write and illustrate a story because I don't have to talk to anybody about it. I can just sit down there and make it. And it, I find my stories don't look like anybody else's stories, and that's a point of pride for me. 
But when somebody sends me a text like Truman, and I think I could put pictures to something that's so fun to read, that's a gift too. So I, I really like them pretty equally. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I have a friend down here. I got two friends. Do you want to come over here? Look. <laughs> We've got somebody who's going to be Batman for Halloween. Me too. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, you like that one? I have a Hungry Lion fan here. Do you have a question? Oh, hi. Anybody else? Well, thank you guys so much. Oh, wait, over here? I think we have a, someone who's curious about microphones, <laughs> which I don't have answers for. Ah, here we go. Hi. Yes, hi, I'm Miriam. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess I will be I guess I will be Star. Oh, is, it, is that what you're gonna do? Yeah. That's gonna be really cool. Happy Halloween already. Anybody else? Somebody else standing up? No. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Oh wait. <gasps> yes. No. I want this question. That looks like a good one. So, okay. Some people are too shy to ask if you've ever decorated a gourd for Halloween. Okay, so I have a confession to make. It's impossible to carve a gourd. It can't be done. And I kept worrying that the copy editor was going to say that I couldn't have a carved gourd in my story, but I think she liked the joke enough that she let it slide. You could draw on it, but it wouldn't be the same thing. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, thank you guys. Oh wait, I have a hand over here, my friend. Yes, I did. So I went to the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, and I studied communications design. And I wanted to be a graphic designer, and I wanted to make business cards. And you know what I ended up doing? I, did, I took an internship at Simon & Schuster, and I worked on self-help books. I would make them from hardcovers into paperbacks. And that was really interesting. <laughs> and I thought, I really definitely want to go work on a buffalo ranch and <laughs> not do graphic design. And then. I realized half my bookshelf was picture books that I'd moved to college with, and when somebody told me it was an actual job, then I did everything I could to get that actual job, and I'm so happy. Oh, I got one more, oh, one more here, one more here. You guys go right to the mic. Can you come? I can't guess, what is it? An astronaut. That's a great choice, I like that very much. Thank you. Very cute. He is pretty cute, right? I have to tell you that now I always choose a stumpkin because I realized that I had that same bias. Because it looks weird and wrong. It even still does to me. You got a question? Okay. Go for it, yeah. I want to be a ladybug for Halloween. That sounds like a great plan. One minute left. Who else is going to be something? For Halloween, everybody, when I count to five, or no, three, shout when I get to three. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah! I'm taking all those ideas. You have more to your question? Ask the next part. I want to hear it. Oh, tell me. There you go. You're halfway there. Oh, I got another question. How did you get the idea for your Halloween book? Um, so, as I said, so I, I saw a stumpkin and basically I thought, well, that's very weird that I have a strong feeling that that's a bad pumpkin. And why is it a bad pumpkin to me? And as I started to see in my neighborhood where they sell pumpkins like that, in that arrangement, I would watch them stick around and I would get nervous for them. And when I was growing up, we used to wait until Christmas Eve to get a Christmas tree and we'd get the ones that got thrown out. And so we, I was raised to take care of those orphans, and so that was my thinking. That's a great... I like that. Oh, wrap it up, my sign says. So I will wrap it up with one last question. I'm gonna be a ninja for Halloween. My son's gonna be a ninja too. 
a red one. <laughs> Good job. Wow, that's going to be amazing. All right, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the book festival.